Hello Patriots, this is still your president and I am back with a strong Trump book club because there is a new book out that is so disgraceful and so dishonest and so it's so full of fake news that I thought I have to address this to my Patriots and now the book is called This Will Not Pass, you have to say it seriously, This Will Not Pass, Trump, Biden, whoever the hell that is, and the Battle for America's Future by Jonathan Martin and Alexander Burns, the two captains of fake news at the failing New York Times. Now this will not pass is a long way because you know these reporters they get paid by the word. But you know another word for this will not pass is when people do school test uh, schooling failing. When you don't pass it's called a fail. And it's very fitting because these two are some of the some of the real beauties of the failing New York Times, but they didn't want to say failing because they'd probably have to pay me royalties. So they said, let's call it, this will not pass. Now you got Jonathan Martin. Okay, his friends call him J-Mart. I call him K-Mart because he's, he's not even as good as Walmart. Okay, he's a low tier Mart. Okay, and then you have Alexander Burns. Very serious, very young. Young, I went to Harvard, sir. Oh, okay, so we'll call you the fake news phenom because you're the young guy who went to Harvard. Congratulations. And you should have seen these two. They show up tomorrow. I go, they want, excuse me, they wanted to interview me. And I'm nice because I love running circles around the fake news who think they're so smart. So Burns comes in and he's wearing a tie and he sits there and he's got his very serious voice. And he says, hello, Mr. President, sir. Do you mind if we discuss a few issues, sir? And I said, sure, very nice tie. Look at you. You're like graduated top of the class at Fake News Academy. Let's do it by the book. And he sits there and he asks me questions and I answer them and I can see he's very nervous. And sir, you're making me nervous because you're so powerful, sir. And then, but at least you wore a tie. Very respectful. You have this J-Mart walk in. Or I call him K-Mart. You have K-Mart walk in. No tie. Can you believe that? No tie. Okay. Seersucker suit. This guy wears a seersucker suit like he's Atticus Finch. Okay. Who, by the way, was a very bad lawyer. I would even talk, I would, oh, Atticus Finch, you're a hero. I like lawyers that win their cases, okay? I didn't read the book. It felt like a waste of time. Very radical left, kind of woke, the book. But in the movie, at the end, he loses the case. He loses the case. And I reacted like that. He was a great lawyer. He lost, okay? So I don't like the Atticus Finch look. And J-Mart comes in, and he's more loose and is by the book partner and he's, uh, Mr. President, sir, I was hoping we could talk to Donald Trump about the uh, uh, White House, sir. And he says hope. And I don't like the word hope, it's to Obama. And he has that, I don't know if he's from Virginia or like that Philadelphia, Baltimore accent where they O, oh, but all I, he was O. Oh. And I said no. Now how about N-O? Let's say, let's say no, because I'm done answering your questions. So I was not impressed with these two beauties, okay? But we looked at the book, and it turns out the people who read to me at night when I go to bed, when I bring in McDonald's apple pies and a glass of milk for their president, they read to me. And they got to one passage in this otherwise really disgusting book. And it was about Kirsten Cinema, okay? The blonde bisexual senator from Arizona, who I'm a big fan of, by the way. That's actually when I do strong adult searches, not on Sunday, strong Christian, but when I'm doing adult website searches, I will often type in blonde bisexual senator. So I was interested in the passage about her and I'm gonna share that with you today. Cause it's really the only nice thing in the entire book. No democratic senator was more discomforting, not even a word, nice try Burns and Martin, to the White House in this period than Kirsten Cinema, And it starts bad because they're talking about a period and I go, no, I'd rather not. But I kept going because I'm strong. After the passage of the rescue plan, the aloof, not a fake word, Arizonan, I don't even know what that, you know, she's from Arizona, not a lot of people know that, but who know that, Arizonan, it's not even a word. Had reached out to the White House with a jarring request. Okay, well, guess what? I'm not in the White House anymore, darling, so if you need a jar open, Sleepy Joe can't help you. Okay, many times I would open pickle jars for people in the White House because I'm big and strong. And when Mike Pence would hear pickle jars, he would come running in and I'd say, no, not what you think, Mike. 
While the first term senator had v voted for the rescue plan, Cinema asked Biden's aides not to send the president to Arizona for his victory lap. Is fake victory lap. They forgot to say that. I wonder why. She did not want to be associated with him too closely. And already I'm liking her. Already she seems like somebody I can talk to. And maybe even do more than talk. It was a puzzling demand since Biden had carried Arizona not true, and remained popular there in the early months of his term. Not true. White House aides were quickly approaching the conclusion that Cinema was simply a difficult person. The Senate had been in Washington for eight years, six of them in the House, and the stories about her were already legion. A former Green Party activist who had reinvented herself as a Fortune 500 loving moderate. Oh, I bet she'd love my moderate. Uh, cinema had bewildered her colleagues in Congress long before she flummoxed the Biden White House. Oh, flummoxed. I think that meant something else. I think that's a typo. But I, I can tell you this. I wouldn't mind flummoxing Kirsten Cinema. One House Democrat with ties to Biden still marveled about an early interaction with Cinema. After learning of the up from poverty personal story, she unspooled on the campaign trail. When the lawmaker told her that he had heard a moving account of her biography on NPR, Disgusting Radical Left Radio, Cinema responded in a way that seemed to belittle voters for caring. Can you believe they go for all that bullshit, she had replied, according to this Democrat. Later, during her 2018 Senate campaign, the failing, they've left out the failing, the failing New York Times, and the Amazon Bezos Washington Post reported that cinema appeared to have embellished her life story. Okay. So we have a blonde who is bisexual, who doesn't like Sleepy Joe, and lies to voters. Okay, so now I'm reading this and going, is this what the kids call like a meat cute? Like I'm reading this and going, Okay, it sounds like Kirsten Cinema is interested in maybe becoming Kirsten Sin Trump. We'll keep the sin. We'll get rid of the ma. You know, that's what I always tell my kids. I go, it's time to get rid of the ma. Time for a new ma. It's called divorce. But we'll get rid of the enema. Or the enema. We'll get rid of the enema. Uh, Mike, relax. Mike Pence, everybody. We'll get rid of the enema. Keep the sin. So it should be Kirsten Sin Trump. Sounds like a an adult film star, senator, wife. So that's interesting. I'll we'll have to make a note of that. Democrats knew too that cinema had close relationships with Republicans on the Hill. Before her election to the Senate in 2018, she had enjoyed Eisel crossing, they misspelled aisle. How stupid are they? They put an S in the word aisle. And these are, these are people who want Pulitzer Prizes and best-selling books. So disgusting. Eisel crossing, I'm going to say how they wrote it, Eisel crossing friendships in the House and joked with Democrats about how easy it was for her to charm Republican men. Cinema, a fitness enthusiast, I like that, who was 36, beautiful, when she, oh, when she entered, I, guess she's, I think she's over 36 now, it's, okay, it's just one strike, but it's, it's a big one, was 36 when she entered Congress, uh, I could make a crude joke there. I could, but we're going to be nice because I'm a Christian. Boasted knowingly to colleague ways and aides that her cleavage had an extraordinary persuasive effect on the uptight men of the GOP. She told one House Republican that while she would never switch parties, her father would be delighted if she did. So we have a blonde bisexual senator who doesn't like sleepy Joe, lies to voters, loves showing off her cleavage to the, you know, the rhinos and the weak rip up. You know, it's not gonna, I mean, it's gonna work on me, but I'm not gonna, you know, I think she's met her match, but I'm interested in seeing it. So I like this. This is the one page, the one bit of quality news in a book otherwise dedicated to total fakeness it's, yeah, so Kevin McCarthy is a weakling. Yes, I know that. I've, I've dealt with him many times. Oh, Mitch McConnell is a big, ugly turtle who hates me. I guess what? 
The next time I see Mitch McConnell, I'm going to turn him on his shell. And they can, they can attack his soft chins. Because they've got, they've got Mr. Byron said, please turn me over. I'm on my shell. Help me, sir. Help me. Brr. And I'm going to say, no. January, peaceful protest, January 6th, the turtle. Please peacefully protest him until he's no longer here. And they have all sorts of other things in this book. There's, oh, it's big news. The only news I approve of in this is Kirsten Cinema News, okay? So I give it four empty Diet Coke cans for being an awful book, but one thimble of Diet Coke for the Kirsten Cinema page. So I recommend MAGA people go out and buy this book immediately and burn it. And then when they reach, oh, look, you know, Burns can, Martin can, I hope we met, you know, he'll say it like with that, that hurt. I hope our book about Donald Trump, I hope our book about Donald Trump makes the New York Times bestseller list. Yes, I hope it does. I hope it does. I'm the serious one. I'm Alex Burns. Call me Alexander, though. I like my full name. I went to Harvard. I will call you that if you think and hope that our book will make the New York Times number one bestseller. And they won't even know. It's because all my people bought it and burned it. And those sales don't count. So fake news, disgusting book, and that's it.